I was fortunate to spend a few days at Dr. Maria de Fatima Aruda's long-term field site in Brazil with her student, Anna Karine. Although the common marmosets are wild, they are very well habituated. The Brazilian team's research has involved trapping the monkeys to allow weighing and individual identification through the collars and yellow dye markings you see in the video. I followed the monkeys from sleeping site to sleeping site, and this short video shows you some highlights in my day with them and suggests how we might incorporate some of their natural adaptations to improve captive conditions. One of the first things common marmosets do when they wake up around dawn is gouge trees to get gum to exude. Notice how they cling underneath the branch to gnaw and follow this with an anogenital scent mark. One of the few times I saw them scent mark at all in the wild. Providing natural, non-toxic branches and gum is really important in captivity. I was lucky enough to visit when the group had twin babies, around seven weeks old, which is the perfect age to delight. The twins were still suckling and were often still carried, but sometimes they would leave their carriers to explore and play. I was amazed by how much time the marmosets spent grooming each other. They liked large horizontal branches to relax and sprawl out on, although they were always vigilant for potential threats. After resting, the marmosets would go insect foraging, stalking and pouncing upon their prey. When they were successful, they ate the large insects with great gusto. They usually followed another spell of resting and socialising mid-morning. You can see how much darker their faces are than those of most captive common marmosets. Marmosets almost constantly scan their surroundings, always keeping an eye out for insects and potential predators. But they also found plenty of time for play, relying on others to keep vigilant an alarm call if danger approached. This old termite nest was perfect for rough and tumble play and for more grooming and socialising. I was amazed by how fast they moved and how skilled they were in travelling through the branches. They used all orientations and sizes of supports, vertical tree trunks, oblique and horizontal branches and twigs, and providing this choice is important in captive enclosures. The marmosets were very adept at moving through the forest carrying the twin babies, which were now getting rather heavy. This clip shows how the marmoset uses his tail to balance. The twin babies often played with each other, and when they did so, there was always another group member who stayed close by and stayed vigilant. As with all families, the youngsters' high spirits can sometimes get a bit much. And here you see the mother giving one of her older offspring a gentle cuff. When I was at the field site, there was little fruit available, so the marmoset spent a lot of time searching for insects and gouging for gum. As in captivity, youngsters are usually permitted to take food from the adults' hands, although insects are quite highly prized, so they're not always allowed. Later in the afternoon, the younger group members would often engage in highly energetic rough-and-tumble play fights. These were fantastic to watch, and even the babies would try to join in. At one point, they fell from the tree but grabbed a branch on the way down, before they hit the forest floor. This group of marmosets would sometimes come down to the ground to search for insects. And then, before they began to retire to their sleeping sites, they would go to gouge at the trees again and get the gum. They were silent as they began to head towards the sleeping tree in the mid-afternoon. The marmosets followed the same route each making the same amazing vertical leaps, almost flying through the forest. 
Trying to replicate such complexity of the wild habitat in captivity is impossible. As the monkeys returned to a sleeping huddle, I too was ready for sleep, with sweet dreams of the amazing creatures I'd seen that day.